All right, Eduardo, so back to people buying investment properties here. Here is a question. If I'm buying three properties in Cabo and have the expectation to possibly purchase more, does it make sense to open up an SRL, an LLC here in Mexico instead of individual fideicomisos for each property? It's a very good question. It just depends on the nature of the investments. If your investments are solely residential in nature, in the sense that you really do not have any type of desire to rent it out, to have some sort of commercial component associated to that tenure, let's say you're having this house as a second home and you sometimes want to come down to the beach in Cabo and have a second home, uh, I would obviously advise against having a Mexican SRO, which is Sociedad Responsable Limitada. You, you phrased it well, and it's, it is a limited liability company in Mexico. It qualifies under U.S. tax uh, law as a partnership, the SRL does, instead of an SA Sociedad Anonima, which doesn't. Uh, so in that sense, it's easier for uh, sophisticated buyers to have this type of structure in place in Mexico. It gives you the advantage of avoiding the setting up of the trust or fideicomiso, the, the Spanish word for it, and it avoids the annual carrying costs of a residential trust because you have the acceptance fee, which is around $500, plus the annual fee, which is another $500. So they normally request two years in advance when they set up the trust. So you're out there 1500 US just on trustee fees, plus around uh, anywhere from 1500 to $2,000 of the permit process to get a permit from the Ministry of Foreign Relations in Mexico City. Because under the foreign investment law, you require a permit from the Ministry of Foreign Relations. So going back to the need or the convenience of having a Mexican limited liability company, the SRL. It again depends on what you're trying to accomplish. If you're mentioning several properties, I'm guessing not all of them will be residential in nature in the sense of not having just people stay there uh, free of charge because it's a corporate perk or because it's family property and you sometimes come down with extended family and you have you know a couple of homes here. Uh, that that would basically be my recommendation to have individual trust or fideicomisos for those. However, if you do have a desire to invest and have people, for example, an Airbnb with a proper lease agreement, whether it be a short-term lease or a long-term lease, then you have an argument for Mexican tax purposes to say, look, uh, we're not avoiding the trust for avoiding the trust. We're doing this because it makes more sense for our actual business, which is renting it out. It doesn't have to be fully rented every single day of the year, but we obviously have to show that. And what the Mexican government wants is simply payment of taxes, which makes sense. And not only that, the hotel association is all for it because the hotel association said, hey, you know, these people that are renting their, house out, their homes out, you know, we're paying taxes, we're paying payroll, we're paying all these types of fees with our business, and then people just have an individual house and they rent it out with no payment of taxes. And so if they do have the proper setup, the SRL will provide you two things, Fletcher, which is the actual barcoded Mexican official invoice or factura uh, for the state. And so that is how you get the income reported to the Mexican authorities. So taxes is also going to be a component to take into consideration regarding these types of transactions going forward. And it all depends, again, on the nature of those investments. And you can also probably, if you have several homes that are just gonna be residential, you might even ask for a discount uh, for the trustee uh, to get you that. But again, it all depends on what you're trying to do. And avoiding the trustee just for avoidance sake might get you into trouble but again that's one of the reasons uh, we are here to recommend the proper investment channels so just to recap if you are 100 percent looking to invest mm -hmm. and you're buying two or three properties and you might add like one a year um, and this is just you're diversifying out of assets in the mm -hmm. united states 
an SRL could be a very good option. It is a good option, and obviously it also involves the commercial aspect. And I want to stress the fact of commercial as opposed to residential, because if you have those items in place for investment, just for the sake of appreciation of certain assets, and let's say that Mexican investment in realty is going to do better than the stock market in the U.S., for example, that's not the reason enough to go into the SRL. But if you have a structure where you basically say, okay, it's kind of like a holding company and say, we will have these, uh, these assets into the company with the membership interests into this divided in these properties, then you know it does make sense because you avoid these additional carrying costs and the red tape associated with getting the trust in place.